I will thank you everyone for joining us this evening for our joint session. I will read a brief bio on Assemblyman Clyde Vanell, and then I will pass over the controls to Valerie and Asha for their coordinating of this conversation. Assemblyman Clyde Vanell serves as the chair of the subcommittee on internet and new technology and chairs the committee on oversight analysis and investigation. He has sponsored numerous landmark bills such as legislation to create a robotics automation and artificial intelligence commission, license high risk AI systems and create a cryptocurrency and blockchain study task force. He has focused on emerging technologies and works to close the digital divide among marginalized communities. I'm not gonna read his entire bio other than I'll say that Vanell earned his Juris Doctor from, Juris Doctor from Boston University School of Law where he was the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Science and Technology Law. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Aviation Administration and an Associate of, Appli an Associate of Applied Science in Aerospace Technology from Farmingdale State College, where he served as student government president. Serving as the assembly member for the 33rd District of New York since November 8, 2006, his district includes Cambria Heights, St. Albans, Hollis, Queens Village, Belarus, and parts of Floral Park. Fennell was raised in Cambria Heights, New York with nine siblings, and he is a member of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. Thank you very much for joining us today, Assemblyman. Uh, thank you for having me. Really, really uh, excited about being here. Really excited about being here uh, before this august body um, uh, and talking about these very important uh, issues, cutting edge issues in the world and more particularly uh, in the practice and the, um, you know, the application of law. Okay. Valerie, you can unmute yourself and initiate the conversation. So uh, thank you again, Assemblyman, for being here today. I'm the co-chair of the Data Privacy and Cybersecurity Meeting uh, Committee at the MBBA. And we are partnering with the Public Policy Committee on this timely topic on AI. And can you tell us more about your role uh, as the chair on the as the chair of the subcommittee on internet and new technology in the New York State Assembly? Well, before I take before I talk about my role, I want to just try to I guess give some background on why this why this topic is important and, and why it's particularly important for us more than what my role is. Um, this artificial intelligence and these, these technologies, at a time when we are all losing or we're at a time when this country has DEI programs like uh, you know diversity, equity, and inclusion programs being eroded since I, I think you know this is happening for the past few decades but definitely you know there was a watershed moment uh on on june 29th 2023 after the uh sffa um versus harvard decision supreme court where the supreme court essentially tried to dismantle affirmative action so why is this topic so important for us? Why is it so important when it talks about diversity? And where, where does that tie in? Um, in particular, when it comes to um, what we call algorithmic bias, or when we talk about uh, automated systems, uh, disparate impact decision making, what does that mean? As we have programs and as we have systems that stand in the place of human decision making, we want to make sure that we must protect us more important. We must protect people more, you know, even more. And we have to make sure that there are systems in place, whether it's technological, whether it's human, whether it's legal, to stand in the gap. And it's really important, historically, lawyers and attorneys have been the ones to stand in that gap. So we're dealing now with, so my role as the state, you know, in, 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 in New York State. It's not by mistake that someone of my hue is the chair of the technology committee 
when I first came here, we had no such committee. Uh, I first got elected in 2016, and there were many issues surrounding technology issues. And, and there was no committee that it lived in. As a matter of fact, the closest committee that it lived in in New York State was agriculture and technology, same thing at the federal level. So fought hard to make sure that we created uh, a, a committee to be able to handle technology issues. What's really important is that the, there's been a lot of discussion about opening the door for people that look like us and whoever else is on the call, but people that, you know, that are, uh, you know, that are from minority background to be able to participate in the technology field. Very concerning kind of conversation when historically the sciences, astronomy, architecture was born out of Egypt, was born out of Africa. And, you know, fast forward to now, folks are asking, folks that look like me are asking for permission to participate. Very interesting. Very interesting when these things are new. And there's, I think there's some opportunity when, when these technologies are new, and it's new for everyone. So we can take a position to be able to figure out to how to lead that conversation. So I think it's important that when it comes to these technology conversations, these technology policy decisions, these po policy making and, and considerations, it's very interesting. It's very um, because the space is so new, it, it it leaves opportunity for for us to be able to number one, not only lead the conversation to be, but to be able to shape it just like we can with the technology. Uh, Those are very important points that you made, and it makes sense that somebody that looks like us is on the committee or even leading the way, um, especially when you me mention Egypt, and we know um, the history of Egypt and a lot of times where our history has been erased from, invent from inventing things. Um, so, so, yeah, so but some are calling AI the third industrial revolution. What do you think about that? So, well, so much to say about ideas and our ideas getting stolen from us. I'm an intellectual property attorney, so I don't even want to start off with. Okay, you know, sorry. I, I could go there for hours, but let's not go there on this conversation. But um, technology, definitely technology, artificial intelligence definitely is a new revolutionary kind of creates new and revolutionary types of business opportunities. Not only has it and will it create new, whole new industries, it will also revolutionize and have revolutionized industries. Now, it also will have costs. There's costs to it too. There will also be erosion of certain types of jobs and tasks that is going to happen. In particular, that's going to happen and has happened to your jobs. It happened to me as an attorney. When I first, when I first, actually, as a matter of fact, today is a very special day in the legal world in New York State because actually I'm in Albany and you know, a couple of steps away, there are thousands of people taking the bar exam right now. Right? There are thousands and thousands of people taking the bar exam as we speak. So let's give a special prayer to them because they're going through, you know, <laughs> it was no joke. Um but when I first started, when I first started, my first job was working at a law firm and I used to do something called, I don't know if you guys remember stuff like this, but there's something called document review. And they used to put me in, you know, a room with no windows. And I used to have to look for privileged documents. I had to look, I had to look through documents that had attorney names on it. And if there was any correspondence between attorney names, I would have to put that on the side and mark that as potentially privileged communications. And I used to do that manually. And I we had boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff. 
Now, I don't think that's I don't think people do that anymore. I think that you that that can all be done with scanners, and there's software that can do that, right? So there's there's so there's te technology has already replaced many of the tasks that used to be done uh, in the past, right? I used to did you guys do shepherdize? Do you guys have to hand shepherdize and blue book? Was that a thing? I don't know if that's a thing anymore. I don't think that's a thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a thing. You just can't use Chat GPT without checking your sources. Oh, that's right. That's exactly. You can talk about that too. But but so anyway, so technology will change, has and will change and revolutionize work. But it will also create new opportunities and new jobs and new things. It'll also create new legal opportunities. So for example, when it comes to what which is a special responsibility for this organization when it comes to uh, to algorithmic bias. So let's let's bring it, let's bring that to the ground. So I don't like talking about stuff where, you know, I don't want to talk about, I don't want to use the word algorithmic bias or or, or automated system decision making. I want to talk about an example. So I'm on the banking commission. And we 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 review New York banks that do that do business in New York. And we look at the we look at the approval rates for mortgages for people that apply for banks, and there's demographic information. When there are higher than normal instances of denials for people from certain zip codes, and from for, for people with certain hue of their skin, we want to see hey what is what's the situation. Without today. Most people don't go and apply for a mortgage with the mortgage teller in the bank in their neighborhood. Most, if not all, apply through software. You apply online, you put your information, blah, 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 blah. We found that there are higher instances of rejection for certain people and females um, as opposed to white men. And... It's not an answer to say, is that we cannot accept the answer, the software did it, right? We cannot, well, the, the algorithm did it. We don't know what the blah, blah, blah. We have, a, we have an issue with, with, with transparency when it comes to algorithms or what have you. But, but there's a space for, I think there's a space. And what we're trying to, what we're doing in the law is uh, what we have done was in, in many of the bills that we've written to, to be able to review these types of automated decision-making systems is to have periodic audits. Very interesting to make sure that attorneys that look like us are well-versed in making sure on, on checking the, 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 the results of automated decision systems. Very important. That's going to be a new thing. Right. Another thing that's going to be important, and we're going to write that into the law. Another thing that's going to be important, and it must be in the law, we must have, there must be, when it comes to automatic decision-making systems, there must be a system of periodic audits to check to see what that looks like and who else to be able to hold that to account. That's a whole new thing. That's a whole new thing for us to be able to, to be able to take advantage of to make sure that we're checking the decisions of not just banks, but of colleges, of well, whatever is taking the place of making human decisions that that can impact the uh, the communities that must be protected. Do you That's think a, that you'll look at? I mean, obviously, you're going to look at the numbers and what the um what these automated systems are are doing, but also is it an issue of who's programming the algorithm? Because I mean, I understand that there's a certain level where things are automated, but someone designed the algorithm. So that's- Someone so, that might not look like us. So that's another point. So that so the, so there's a point of, again, someone coming in, applying for stuff, blah, 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 blah. They put in that system, what that decision comes out. Now there's another point to make sure that there's no disparate impact for uh, for algorithm for 
for programs that that have to censor that uses censors that affects people. What do I mean by that? So we found that. So another example, just to give poor examples. In New York State, we do not allow full self driving in New York State. So even if you have a full self driving car in New York State, all of its uh, all of its capabilities are not active in New York. As a matter of fact, what we might do, we'll, we'll make we'll let it be active for five minutes and then stop it on the big highway, or for mm -hmm. a certain amount of time and then stop it, or, or what have you. In other states, don't you let go. don't allow it. Assemblyman, I don't trust it. They don't know what they're doing. A self-driving car in New York City sounds crazy to me. We don't we don't allow it. We, we, we do not allow it. But we found out that the algorithm is less likely to identify me as a human than it is as to a white man because of my skin. Why? Because the, the we get bad data in, bad results, right? So so what happens is that, what happens is that for, and so that's the, the, the point is, it's really important to have really good data sets, right? When you're, when you're working on systems, that's another place for, that's another place for, I believe, black lawyers to be able to not only quantify or test to be able or review the data sets that go into these programs. So that's another that's another thing, right? So that's another thing where you know where something is supposed to identify people, right? Um, and if it's only gotten very few people of color data sets, then the results will be biased. So so anything that has to sense that anything that has to pick up, oh, you're a, you know to see what you look like or what have you, blah 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 blah. If it doesn't get enough data from people of color. Right. If they didn't have enough of the data sets, then the results would be would have a disparate impact on us. So but is that, the government going to. So tell the people that are creating these data sets that they have to have, like, you know, some kind of algorithm that like is. That so, at least matches the population. Right. How are you going to have like 100 percent of people that don't look like us when we're allegedly 14 percent? I believe it's more of the population. Like again, that's, so, that's hard for me to understand. So, again, there's there's a place where I can legislate. Right. That makes sense. And there's a place where you guys got to pick up and the gaps. That's why they pay okay. you guys big bucks. Right. That's why they're going to pay you guys. big. So there's there's space. For uh, for you, for you to be able to address these these gaps, right? And there are gaps, right? There's space for you to address these gaps, and these are wide gaps, and um, right. So I, you know, so for me to legislate and say, hey, you got to have a hundred percent fair, you know, fair um, data sets. I, you know, I'm still exploring how to do that. Okay. But, Besides, while I'm trying, while we're trying to figure that out, you know, what, there is opportunity for 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 you guys to be able. Again, I just I just identified two huge you know opportunities for you guys to help steer what this is in the DEI AI technology space. And there's no one else that can speak to that better than folks like you, um, which is really important. So right, so now there's a right, so there's this opportunity now when it comes to DEI and technology that was not there before. And 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 we bake, we we will bake into the law certain things for recurring audits, for recurring reviews, for recurring what have you, because this is going to be an issue that is ongoing. We cannot accept a world where a self-driving car will hit black people, right? Darker people that we cannot accept that. But 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 before well, they that, they wouldn't see us. These self-driving cars don't see black people, or they just like. I'm just saying the algorithm. The algorithm. Right. So the al So again, the way the algorithm works, it gets information. It says, okay, yes. this is a person. This is a tall person. This is a short person. This is a human. This is a da da da. This is a blah 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 blah. And there there's data sets that say they send them a lot of pictures. A lot of examples, and they, if if 
if there's an overwhelming example of people and and high percentage of them are of a certain skin tone, if you send them, it could confuse my skin tone with not a human. It's it's artificial intelligence at this point. That level of intelligence is not intelligent. It's it's very it's it's a, it's a robot. It's Doctor Spock, and you know it's not it's not it's not machine learning yet, and that creates an opportunity for for us to make sure that they get it. You know they have to do it right. Let's let's talk about let's talk about generative AI. Even with generative AI, right? It, it uses what the data that's out there. So it, it you know even generative AI can have disparate uh, um, uh, results based on what's out there. So it's really important for us to be able to you know for uh, for us to be able to for you I'm sorry not for you as the as attorneys of color to be able to 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 stand in that gap when it comes to technology and protecting you know us from adverse impacts when it comes to automated decision making and when it comes to algorithmic bias. Wow. We're definitely gonna have to have more sessions on this if you're available, Assemblyman. Because this yeah. is off the hook. And this is and it's important. That's why we're having these conversations. It's important to be you guys can be able to help draft what the laws are. Um, you know, you guys are able to draft and help construct what the weapons you're going to be using in battle before you go back to before you go to battle. And and there's a special place for us to speak about this stuff. So when they talk about when we speak about, you know, um, you know, the and we're just talking about DEI and, and AI at this point, when we talk about this stuff, there's opportunity for 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 you to be able to make sure that 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 you know that you know people are treated fairly with technology and based on these these tech, this this technology um spaces and keep in mind at this point this is a burgeoning field of it's not even a burgeoning field of law it hadn't started yet right so you, we can you guys can get it started okay we like that yes assemblyman i know you're you're one of the first you're the innovator one of the first in new york state to draft legislation using generative ai uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? I was doing some research. Seems like it's controversial, some positive, some negatives, but I just would like to hear your thoughts on it. I think I don't think it should be controversial. And I, I don't think it's I don't think there's no neg I don't think there's any negatives. I think that, you know, you should you we should be using the tools available to us. Right. I think that that as attorneys, you guys should be using generative AI and wrestling with it and seeing how you can how it can help you with your practice of law. Uh, now, that doesn't that means how to use it responsibly. When folks talk about the irresponsible use of the attorney that had, you know, that used a, a program, a process to write, you know, a a um, I don't know, to write a response or a memo or to whatever 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 you know legal document that they they um, they used. Again, to yeah, sorry, brief. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I'm not in law. I'm not. Uh, I don't practice in the courts like that. But anyway, to write to write their brief, what's what's really important is the human machine interaction. What's really important is how you use it. You don't use these tools and just let them go, right? You use them properly as a first draft, and you you do it. It's an iterative. Um, process that you okay use it for a draft and you but you know you have to you you know you have to work with it um so that's what i did i used but i didn't use just generative ai i use i use an ai agent which, which means it's more than just generative ai it, it 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 you use it to make to do tasks um and i asked it and what i wanted to see was i wanted to see how good the technology was to be able to help me write a bill and I worked with it and it, you know, and I, and I wanted to see if I could, I didn't ask you to tell, I didn't tell it to build to write. I asked it to find a gap in New York state law. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a general question. So, you know, to see if it had a certain level of general intelligence and it surprised me again, I had to work with it, but it surprised me on what it was able to find. 
the reason why I did that was, okay, if I don't master the, the technology, it will master me. <laughs> if I don't control the technology, mm -hmm. if I'm not the control of the technology, then it will replace me. But if I can control the technology, if I can master it, and then if I could if I could use it to do higher level things, then oh. I'm in control. So for you in your legal practice, I believe it's important to be able to use these different tools and not put your head in the sand. Right. But Valerie, yes. I've gotten feedback and saying, you know, how could you use these systems? You got elected, not the computer um, or, or what have you. And again, the, the point is, the, the point is that we humans, humans must control these technologies and humans must always be in the center of them and we must be in control of them. We must be the programmer. We must be able to use them or, or what have you. And we must be able to master them, which will help us will help us master what we do in, in whatever field of human endeavor that we do. Now, uh, Assemblyman, did, did you feel that using the tool was beneficial overall in terms of the time it would have taken you to draft the bill yourself or the legal research piece of it or any of that? Did you feel like it helped you in terms of cutting of down course. The time more no, 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 uh, Of course, right? Keep in mind, we get bills from many places. We get bills from people giving us ideas. We get bills from our own heads. We get bills from blah, 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 blah. This is not going to replace everybody in the world, no. But what 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 it, what what's interesting is that you know I I will use that as a tool, uh, and I could use that as a tool in the future. But it it will not replace you know the whole, and, and it could help me with first drafts, right? So so if I'm writing things what have you, it could help me with the first draft potentially, or not. I could use it or not. But it's just a tool, and we have to understand that it's you know certain you know certain tools can help you become more efficient in certain aspects. Uh, in certain applications, um, but but people, you know, the the some responses is that you know the sky is going to fall, and that's not the case, right? So, but what's really important is is that you know how do you, is that a tool in your toolbox, and can you use that? When do you use it? When do when when should you not use it? But we get bill ideas from from a lot of different places. But Valerie, it doesn't mean to keep in mind a bill is just an idea of a law. It still has to go through the whole process. Right. It still has to go to committee. It still has to go. Blah, blah. People still have to vote. People still have to. So I'm not replacing people in that. Pro I'm not replacing that whole process with AI. Um, so um, but I do feel that's important for us to be able to use the tools that are available. What about bringing technology to more of our people? Like we're lawyers. And so we know we're in a position to have easier access to it. But just to communities of color in general and to people that look like us that may not be lawyers, um, AI is undoubtedly going to affect them as well. And I know you're like trying to create laws to protect them, but honestly, I'm worried already because of your example about the self-driving car that may hit us because of algorithmic bias, because they don't know about us. And so I'm worried. So we've been working really hard again. So. I just talked about the aspect of policy, but more not more important, but what's really important is to make sure that we close the economic divide, the economic gap, and we close that digital divide. So we find that before we before we even get into AI, we find that there's a there's a higher number and rate of people of color that don't even have access to high speed broadband and internet. So we were working and and if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to fully participate in today's economy and forget about tomorrow's economy. So we put a lot of efforts to make sure that we have, where people have access to quality broadband internet and that people have access to the hardware to be able to, uh, to, to be able to interact with, uh, with society. We also have make sure that we train folks on, you know, have, we have digital literacy programs from eight to 80. And what does that mean? That means that, you know, I've gotten resumes. Well, this, we can be real. Everybody here looks like me. I've got resumes with people's email addresses are, you know, smoothdaddy801 at aol.com. 
That's they got AOL still. <laughs> yes, some people still got that. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But that means that means that somebody that the person doesn't really use email, right? Right. That means yeah, right. So so if we got folks that there was a point, and I'll go back. I keep going back with you guys. But there was a point when I was younger. For me to apply for jobs, I used to go to a mall and fill out applicate, fill out paper applications. Ain't no paper applications anymore. So if I don't have an email address, I can't even I can't even apply for an entry level job. So we talk about, you know, we talk about closing the digital divide. We have to even folks with to apply for entry level jobs have to be able to do so via the internet. So we have to make sure we close that gap. We have to close that that digital divide. We also have to make sure we also have programs. We have programs to train people on not just coding, right? So coding. Now that we're dealing with AI, if I'm just doing straight coding, I'm out. I'm out of the picture, right? So 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 we we have a program with a school in particular in my in my in my district to have them be trained with. I don't want to name out any big companies, but with a with a with a larger tech company to do machine learning, to be able to train machines to train themselves. That's the level we're at. We we I've had programs. I do programs where I was frustrated over COVID, where our young people, when they had to do distance learning, were not doing this. They needed. They had this. What this would be what's happening on their Zoom. This is what's going on in this, right? So you didn't know if they were on or not oh. or whatever, right? They were, you know, and then what happened was when they turned it, when they, they had their Zoom off and when they turned their Zoom on, <laughs> you know why? They're playing video it games. It was bored. <laughs> no, they play video games all night. And I was going crazy because I said, oh, these young folks are playing video games all night. And I had a young person in my office. That's what he did. He played video games all night. But I realized, let's not fight it. No. Let's meet them where they are. So we we did programs. So if you love video games, don't be a consumer, be a producer. Mm. We so we, we have training to be able to to put you know produce your own video game, to be able to program your own video game. And and interesting story, the kid that worked for me that would that would fall asleep during the day. I fired him. I eventually fired him. He didn't cry. I couldn't believe it. He was just like, okay, so what? But he's at home now getting paid to play video games. Oh, he's so, a user tester or something like that. A tester or something like whatever that. Whatever he is, people watch him oh, on YouTube really? to play video games. Oh, yeah. He's making bank then. But- the example is that there are so many new opportunities that are out here. You know, how do we make sure that we uh, we train our, our 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 young people to put them in a position to win? Um, and 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 that's that's important. But it's also just... a different way you have to talk to young people now. I mean, I don't consider myself old, but I know like the same way that the way methods that we were taught with. You have to like kind of go where the people are, where their minds are, and they're not seeing the world the same way that we saw it. The world is different, so you the approach, the educational approach, has to be different, right? That makes sense. That's exactly that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So so we have to make sure that so we have so we so we have programs to expose us to these technologies, and that's something that we have to consistently do, but not just the youth. Our small, we have so many black small businesses that don't even have a website. Mm -hmm. We got so many black small businesses that just accept cash in 2024. What about that? Really? I mean, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. So we still have to, we still have to make sure that, you know, we still have to go to our small businesses also and make sure that they are using the, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're making sure that they reduce the amount of friction to trade value, right? What does that mean? That means that if you want to know how to accept money, go to a college kid. They'll tell you 20,000 ways to send them money, right? They got every kind of way, Venmo, Zelle, Cash App, da, 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 da. but you still go to small business and they only can accept cash. That don't make sense, right? So so we have to, we have to make sure 
that's something that's too. We, we're closing that digital gap for the gap, you know, in the digital age when, uh, when it comes to our small businesses. Are there training programs, state training programs for that? Yes. Or is it just yes. grassroots? Okay. Yes. Yes. But what's important is, again, we, we can have all the programs, in, just like you know. You can have all the programs in the world. You can put all the money in the world. But, you know, th those cats aren't, they don't, they're, they're not watching what Clive and Elle is doing in Albany, right? <laughs> you know, they're busy doing what they're doing. Okay. So, so you know, so you there could be all these programs in the world, all this stuff that's good for them, right? Is getting the word to them yeah. and applying it. That's the that's okay. the, that's where the magic is. That and that's that's where we have to make sure that you know we put boots on the ground to get okay. to them. And then maybe we can help. Maybe we can help. Let's yeah, make yeah. this one of our initiatives. Yep. 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 Really important. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to let everyone know the chat is open for questions uh, for the assemblyman. If anyone else has any question, there's one question that's already in the chat and that's from a um, colleague in the MBBA, Wesley Paisley. And his question is, uh, assemblyman, what are your thoughts on local legislation, New York City, Buffalo, et cetera, addressing technology matters regarding diversity and human rights and in, and in regards to home rule? So keep in mind, um, so when it comes to, you know, dealing with, you know, human rights, diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? The, you know, there are all forms of government have to make sure that we have the proper legislation to address this, right? Federal government, state government, and local governments. Really important for us to, you know, to do that. Really important for us to, co to coordinate, you know, our, 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 you know, our rulemaking and, and, and what we're doing. So, um, so I speak to, you know, so we coordinate with, we try to coordinate as best we can with the federal government. Um, and I have to, this is all burgeoning and new, right? So I have to talk to my local council person when it comes to their local, their, uh, New York city, uh, uh, New York city, um, rules with respect to making sure that there is, uh, you know, algorithmic, you no know, algorithmic bias, New York city, in fact, has has a law for about the past two years about you know algorithmic bias um, and and audits. So they have that in place for New York City based systems uh, and for the agencies. So so that's already in uh, that's in place and that a report is supposed to come out in a year or two with respect to 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 that. But there's a role in every level of government to to address uh, to address algorithmic bias and automated system decision-making. Yeah, okay. I feel like we have a lot of work to do though. I mean, I feel like we always have a lot of work to do, but especially in this area. Um... So yeah, so so Asha, so it's, so this is new. This is, so, so, so putting, so putting AI on top of something, mm -hmm. right? There's gonna be a lot of new businesses where they say, Boom, AI is on top of it, right? There's going to be a lot of new businesses that, that way that's going to take the place of human decision making. That's just doing that in the city, state, and in private sector, right? So there's going to be a lot of space to be able to make sure that, that, that when that happens, especially when it comes to high risk decision making, that we are very careful to see how that uh, is implemented, right? When it, you know, how it, how it affects people. Um, but that's something that there's a lot of work to be done. And again, keep in mind, it's new. Because, because this stuff is new, it creates a lot of space for, for, for you to help form what that's going to look like uh, in the world, especially in, in this state. And I, and I believe that there's a lot of great opportunity to be able to, you know, to, to be able to help design what that's going to look like. Okay. We're here for that. Is it okay if I jump in with a question? Go ahead, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey guys. So, um, uh, Assemblyman Vanell, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Um, I'll just say quickly, it's it's great to see um, a brother doing what you're doing, where you're doing it. Uh, brother of Cap Alpha Psi as well, um, which I am, but also I'm sitting in here in Queens, and I think I'm part of um, the, the the area that you represent. Um, my parents have been here for a long time, so thank you for what you do. Um, 
importantly, you know, I, the question that I had, I think you've already answered it. I mean, you talked a bit about, um, you know, making sure there's access to technology. You talked about addressing bias and discrimination and accuracy and quality of the information. My question really was around um, well, what is it that's there that could help, you know, that's already out there as a model that you view that could be used to help develop the kind of legislation that you're looking to see and that we all should be looking for? You talked about the New York City law, which, is, you know, addresses bias in the employment setting. Um, I, I think that's that's a good place. Right. But there's the executive order that's come out of the White House. Um, and, and that's a starting place perhaps as well, although there aren't very many specifics yet. For how that's going to be implemented, you know, I'm I'm a chief privacy officer for a healthcare company. You know, I've been in this space for a little bit, and this is I I think you're right. This is a watershed moment. There's a there's an opportunity for us here um, to to really do something. And um, you know, I guess the question back to you is how can we help? Um, but you know, what is the model that you think is best and most helpful? So Dean, thank great questions. Um, so I have we have a number of bills that are pending right now as we speak. And and I could um, uh, um, let me see if I put I'll put in the chat a link to my bills. Um, and the governor has taken a number of the bills, a certain number, three bills actually last Friday, and put in the budget. What that means is that now those bills are very likely to become law and pass the whole process of going to both houses and all that kind of thing. But anyway. One of the, one of the that we are one of one of the, the bills that we have in place is is so is high risk AI bill to for high risk uh, decision making. Um, that's one of the bills that we have in place. Another, you know, we have a number of bills that um, um, that address um, that try to address, um, for example, deep fakes, right? So. Uh, yeah. When it comes to when it comes to so I just talked a lot about AI, DEI, what have you, but we didn't talk about deep fakes. We didn't talk about so we didn't talk about uh, making sure we didn't talk about what it means when it comes to generative AI, what it means for for authorship and copyright and ownership. Right. We didn't talk about that. You know, so we have bills that, you know, that addresses that. Mm -hmm. Dean, Thank you. Generative AI, generative AI has been publicly available for less than two years. Right. And it has, you know, the, taken the world by storm. So we have to, we have, to, you know, so there are, you know, so the, there are, there's legislation um, amongst throughout the states that are trying to address this. And New York is avant-garde with a lot of this legislation, if you take a look at what's happening. Okay. Um, and what's important is, the 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 what's important I believe is um, how we do it, and I think that the the way that we're positioned is that we want to have the proper safeguards um, to be able to make sure that we don't want to stifle innovation and creativity, but we also want to make sure we protect people from truth and honest truth and transparency and understanding you know how in, and having proper notice. Like just you know, right now for elections in particular, we're we're we also want space for what's you know for for things to be able to for the dust to settle in this space. Mm -hmm. For example, if you look at you know, I don't want to talk politics, but I follow I follow certain people on social media because whether I like their politics or not, you know, their stuff is funny, but you know they're also crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> so. Somebody actually running for president has just a couple of days ago on their social media has a video of President Biden walking probably to Air Force One. But as he walks, and it's a video, yeah. they, they have him walking into a nursing home. Oh, wow. Now, that they use certain software to do that, right? Certain AI to do that. Some people, you can look at it and laugh, but my mother won't know that it's fake, right? Right. So, you know, so so really important for us to make sure, well, another example. Last month, New Hampshire presidential primary, uh, folks came out with a 
now you could also change, take a few seconds of someone's voice and have them say almost anything. They took President Biden's voice, did a robocall, and told people not to vote in the primary. What? Yes. Happened. Happened. So, so we're dealing, we're dealing with that kind of so when it comes to elections, we have to we have to hurry up and make That's sure that we protect. Hardcore. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think legislation was passed to ban robocalls uh, for yeah. in political campaigns recently. Might... So you cannot ban you can't freeze you cannot ban robocalls Freaky. per se, right? But you 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 have to be able to make sure that you limit. Um, you know, when it there's a not there's a lot of legislation when it comes to robo when it comes to spamming. When it comes to spam mail, spam blah 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 blah. So robocall is a is a form of there's spam laws to be able to address that, but more so, more than spamming, the veracity of that, right? So 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 if so if, because it's so easy to be able to use these tools to be able to fool people, we have to make sure that there's liability on the platforms so that it's not so easy for people to be able to take my voice and do some kind of, kind of thing. Now that's the presidential. That's the presidential and 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 political uh, space. But people are doing that to imagine someone takes, imagine your grandma if she's here, your grandma, your grandfather, and they take the voice of the grandchild and and they, they call them and say, oh my God, I need bail. I'm locked up. Yeah, they've been doing that. They've been doing that. They've been doing that. Now, but but now they could. When they do that, sometimes the grandchild, unfortunately, is in on it. You know, I mean, it's just, I mean, but anyway, that's beside the point. But now, but using AI, I could take that, take the voice of the grandchild, even if they're not in on it, and do so. So again, we have to be able to, to deal with these are new problems that we're dealing with that we haven't seen before. So we have two questions. You have some time. We have Lawrence Montel, and then after that, Dwayne has a question in chat. So Lawrence, why don't you go ahead? Okay, um, thank you for meeting with us. I, I know your time is precious, so we do appreciate it. Um, a question for you, and it may be an unpopular one, but several other states have non-lawyers practicing to fulfill unmet legal needs, like in Minnesota, Utah, and so forth. Are there any discussions around lawyers in New York using AI, say, as a force multiplier to help the rural or the underserved populations? in our state. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not familiar or uh, of any of that, you know, of that, of the use of technology to be able to reach folks in rural, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'd like to see what that looks like. And I want to make sure that to keep in mind when it comes to, you know, when it comes to representing people, you know, as an attorney, we have to be really careful to make sure that folks are have the proper representation. And we want to make sure that, you know, when we're dealing, when we're using technology, that that we protect attorney-client privilege, that we protect the one-to-one -one relationship. Um, so I would like to see what that looks like. I don't, there's no, I don't know of any legislation like that. We could talk about that. Um, but, you know, um, uh, you know, so you're, so, so we have, so we have a relatively, Telehealth is robust, is growing more and more. And a lot of these issues are something that we have with telehealth. Telelegal representation is, is, is interesting. We got to talk about that too, right? So there has to be certain safeguards when it comes to, to telelegal representation uh, to make sure that, you know, um, that, that whoever is on the other side is a licensed New York state attorney. Whoever is on, and the folks that are receiving it is the proper person to be able to receive that um, and that those communications are going to be properly encrypted to make sure that, you know, that, you know, we protect attorneys. So I can think of a whole host of things we could talk about what that looks like. So there's just thinking off the top of my head that's, you know, it'd be interesting. And it's, and it's not, and it's something that we should explore because if, if, if we can do it for telehealth, we should do it for tele mm -hmm. representation. Dwayne, Thank do you, you want to ask your, ask your question? Sure, I'll I'll ask it. Assembly member, good to see you, sir. Hey, Dwayne, how's it going, sir? I'm all right, thanks. Sir. Just to let you guys know, Dwayne saw me, and Dwayne would made sure I got on here. So, and Dwayne lives a few blocks away from me, so you know <laughs> I can't get away from it. So, so. thank you, Dwayne. <laughs> thank you, Dwayne. <laughs> you you you're welcome. Um, 
<laughs> Thank you for blowing me up. Um, just and and you you're gonna know where I'm coming from with this question. You know, while you are very uh, future forward, many of your colleagues are not. How do you drag them out of the 20th century and get government out ahead of technology instead of seeming to always be two two years two steps behind? So Dwayne, so you know the problem, you know, so the issue is not just with my colleagues, right? So the issue is that we have to make sure that we are constantly educating and show the importance of this space, right? So people, you don't have to know how your cell phone works, but everybody knows it's important. Yeah. You don't have to know that the internet works, but you know, you, you know, it's not. You, we're not arguing whether or not you should use the internet or not. We also that's one. Thing, that's another thing. Another thing too is that um, black issues are not just social services. Right. So so, you know, I made it a point to be on on money committees. I made a point to be on economic committees. I made a point to be on technology. We're not only we're not only, you know, one thing. Right. So so so, um, you know, so the more that and as you saw, even this year, you know, our you know, the Black Caucus had the theme of the weekend about technology. So it's, it's really important for us to make sure that we we expand what we do and we expand what we talk about. And as we see that no matter where we are, we see that also the general, the general quality and uh, actual socioeconomic status of us generally has ro has risen generation to generation. I hope it continues. I hope it continues. But right, because now, you know, back in the day, folk couldn't afford to have a dog or the dog, you had to have a dog or keep it outside. Not everybody got some small little dog with clothes on. That's that's new. <laughs> now folks got they money. Get cold. <laughs> right, the, the dog live inside. We ain't had that. We ain't had that back in the day. We couldn't afford the dog eating fancy food. That means you you know you got extra. You got you know you got some. So so you know how do we make sure? So keep in mind. So the, how do we make sure that you know, again we 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 have a we we have policies and we have stuff in place where where folks can climb the socioeconomic ladder. And then if that's happening, we have to be, we have our, what we're speaking about has to reflect that too. We can't be talking 1960s when folks are dealing with 2024. Um, so it's really important for us to get us to a point where, where we're doing that. It's very important. I hope that, I gotta leave soon, but I hope that I impart, I hope coming here that I impart on you guys new spaces of, of, of new areas of law that other folks can't compete with you on, right? Um, in the technology space, that 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 big tech has to come to you, uh, you know, or small tech has to come to you for this kind of stuff, so that we can so we can be in this kind of space. So we have to have these talks. But if we're still talking about stuff that we talked about forever, not to say that that it goes away, but but what's new? What's new for us? What's 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 on the horizon for us? And there's space. For, for black lawyers when it comes to technology and technological issues or what have you that other folks can't compete with. Okay, I know you have to leave, but I think Wesley has one more question. Only one question, Wesley. I think we may have lost Wesley. He's so right there. Hello. Oh, there Can you, you guys go. hear me? Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Sam Member, for coming and speaking. Um, I guess I'm just going to just speak about just generally the good parts of machine learning. Like right now it's going to be used for breast cancer scans. And how can we foster that importance and just the benefit? And this is beyond just kind of like, you know, educating um, individuals, but actually, you know, creating opportunities for it to be used more while still giving those guardrails. Uh, I really just kind of want to dive into that concept of guardrails while fostering. So keep in mind, so this conversation, again, there are artificial intelligence, machine learning, many benefits, many great uses, right? We can't, you know, uh, it, it's creating the, you know, our standard of living is based on the, uh, the, um, event, the constant, you know, advancement of technology. So don't, I, I'm not here saying doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. Right. But but again, as I as I tried to frame what I was talking about, I, was I, I wanted to talk about opportunities for black lawyers. 
That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about opportunities for you guys to stand in the gap. But, you know, I didn't want to spend too much time talking about AI is good for this. AI is good for that. Yeah, da, 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 da. yeah the message are... came through loud and clear. Okay, okay. All Thank right. you so, Wesley... so much, Assemblyman. Okay. So, Wesley, oh, no, so no, no, no. I, I wasn't saying that I was pointing out but... what's positive. I'm saying, like, how can we, you know, do that kind of, like, middle line, you know? How would, what would be the best approach? I mean, that's a, probably a topic we can cover on another session. Yeah. Then we'll um, Because we're almost yeah. out of time. Yeah. And we thank you for everything that you discussed with us tonight, Assemblyman Vanel. It's been invaluable, giving us a lot of things to think about. And, you know, we'd like to continue this conversation and get on your busy calendar again, because it's something that we really think is important. And we really want to represent Black lawyers in the Black community and the future. That's why we're here. So we appreciate you joining us. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you for all that you do. We'd love to work with you guys to engage, to figure out how we move and advance uh, moving forward. Also want to see you guys mega successful and want to see, you know, uh, you know, you guys take different opportunities that are here that this technology allows for. Good night, everybody. Thank, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone much. for attending. Thank you, and thank yeah, you everyone for attending. Night. All right, you guys. So we having a joint committee meeting, even though it's an hour. I mean, PPA doesn't have that much to say other than we'll be having a meeting soon. But this is something that I've been thinking about for a while, talking about it. I've seen, been seeing a lot of things about AA and, and all this, but not about us in the technology sphere and what we can do and to be experts at it, really. I was making sure that we don't get hurt by it. That was my main concern. But now, you know, that the assemblyman has brought forth some other um, things that we can think about. I hope you guys will take, you know, everything that we discussed or he mentioned today to heart and, you know, just circulate, percolate and come back with some more ideas because we're definitely going to have um, more than one session about this. It's not going anywhere and neither are we. And Valerie and I will tell you that um, the data privacy and cybersecurity section, we will continue to have programs on this. And we probably, we're going to have another program in March. Look for the announcement. It's going to be on AI as well, right, Val? Um, AI and uh, labor and employment. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Another important contact for AI. So we look, thank you all for attending. This was yes. very last minute. Um, the assemblyman was at the Ele legislative caucus last week, so we weren't sure if we were going to be able to make it happen. So right. I'm really glad we were able to have such an informative meeting today. So thank you all for attending and look forward to seeing you at future meetings. Right. And, and maybe I, in person. Yes. And Thanks, if anyone is, anyone is on and you want to send us your email address, we can add you to our distribution list. Please feel free to Please drop it that. in, drop it in the chat. Well, you can drop it in the chat this time. Drop it, drop it like it's hot. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at drop it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Well. Well. Have a good night. Have, have a great evening. Thanks, Thanks Dean, Thanks, for showing Josh. up. Yes. Bye. Yeah, Bye. Thanks, Florence. <laughs> all right, I'm going to leave y'all now. Wait a minute. I got to just grab someone's email address. Okay, grab chat. it. Got it. I got it. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. There's another one. All right. I'm not going to leave you hanging. But, uh, I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> I told you. I'm not going to leave you hanging. Hold on one second. I I'm holding. Out, and I got to drop it in a doc so I can move it to our distribution list. All right. Hold on. You got it? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't... I'm waiting. What you mean? Copy and paste. I got that part. It's not okay, as easy as it looks. <laughs> I got it. Thank you very okay. much, Asha. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night.